once we have created the constructor of the class, now let's try to overload a constructor. The idea behind overload is um, that you have more than one constructors that have exactly the same name but different um, signatures. Now when we use the term signature um, in, in the programming language, we basically mean the name of the method and the parameter list. So the name of the method will be the same. Uh, that's exactly what makes it overload. You can actually overload any of the methods in Java. Uh, it doesn't necessarily has to be just constructors. But when you overload a constructor, we call it um, an overloaded constructor. So let me write a comment down here that overloaded constructor. Now all I'm going to do is I'm going to just copy paste this code from up there to down here. Okay. Now as I was talking about, now of course Java doesn't allow you to have two constructors with exactly the same definition as I was talking about earlier on. So I'm going to make some changes here. So rather I'm going to have this uh, accept a couple of parameters. Now the main reason behind doing so is that uh, we have one constructor that sets all objects to their defaults. Now we would like to create another constructor where the programmer has given this, this power of instantiating the objects with not the preset defaults but the defaults that programmer would like to set the object with so for that very purpose we're allow allowing this constructor to pass two sets of parameters and each parameter is being passed into the body of the constructor and then we are using those um, to set um, the values for the object properties so the constructor employee 2 in this case will be used to accept two parameters from the user and we'll be able to um, set the object properties with those two values. Now let's try uh, to put this to practice uh, by calling the object, the second object, which is EMP2, instead of with the default constructor. So calling with default constructor. We will now try to call this with overloaded constructor, the second one. So I'll just comment it here. I'm uh, calling with overloaded constructor. Okay. And uh, in order to call with overloaded constructor, let me pass here um, a name. Let's call it no name. Just to be a little different from the first one. And the second parameter, just to be different from the first one, let's set it to um, 10.77. Okay. So now uh, when we look at the pre-values, you're going to notice the pre-values for EMP1 will be the preset values which are not yet set at negative 1.0. And for the EMP2 will be the values that we're going to pass into these um, parameters, which will be no name and 10.77. Now, since these values are dynamic, if I create EMP3 and I decide to call the overloaded constructor, I can pass different values and then those will be the values that will reflect EMP3. But you have to understand that whenever you assign values to the properties of an object, those values are only associated with that object because objects by nature are non-static. That means they don't share the state, they just maintain their own state. Whatever change you make to them will gonna stay with them. And that is the very reason that all the setters and getters are also non-static because they maintain a state of the object or they are used to retrieve the state of the object or to set the state of the object so you got to always keep in mind that whenever you're dealing at the object level you have to make sure that you're working with non-static so now let's try to run this and since I didn't save it that's why it gave me that dialog box and I clicked OK on it and here you can see that employee 1 is not yet set with negative 1.0 and employee 2 is whatever we pass, like no name, as opposed to not yet set. And instead of negative 1.0, we, we decided to settle with 10.77. And down here, you were able to notice that either way, the values were overwritten by the next set of execution. Thank you for watching it.